I want to take some time now to break open our scripture text today and see what they might be saying to us about the heart of the matter of the gospel. And so today's reading comes from the Gospel of John. If you have your bulletin, you can follow along as I read this aloud. It was still the first day of the week, that evening, while the disciples were behind closed doors because they were afraid, Jesus came and stood among them. He said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. And when the disciples saw the Lord, they were filled with joy. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As God sent me, I am sending you. Then he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. That's from the end of John's Gospel. So twice in this passage today, Jesus says to the disciples, Peace be with you. And I want to invite you to meditate on that phrase for just a minute. What does it mean for you to hear that phrase today, Peace be with you, living in the midst of a uh, dark times, living in the midst of pandemic, living in the midst of uncertainty, what could it mean for you to say, peace be with you? And I, I want you to actually consider today where you are finding peace right now, or who are you finding peace in, or what activity are you engaging in where you find some measure of peace? And I want you to spend just a couple of minutes talking about that with whoever you're with this morning. If you're, if you're uh, worshiping with somebody at home, maybe you meditate on yourself. You can certainly drop your answers and responses into the chat where other people could see it. But we're going to take just a couple of minutes. We're going to pause now and let you have some conversation either in your own head or with the people you're with or through the chat. Where are you finding peace right now in the midst of pandemic? And Beth's going to play some music while we have some conversation with each other. So I'm seeing some of you saying you're finding peace by being outside or spending time with family. Some of you are engaging in practices like yoga, um, crocheting. Uh, is So taking up maybe some kind of an activity that you can engage in, being in nature. A number of you are saying that or being with friends. Some of you are, my brother Barry says he's rereading old favorite books. I've been doing that as well. Um, taking care of people is how some of you are finding peace. Some of you are finding peace with your dogs and your cats or other pets, and that's really wonderful too. Um, some of you are creating art together, I see. Just a good cup of coffee, says Katie, and that's uh, certainly, some of us are finding, re reclaiming our uh, desire for food in new ways or finding new things to cook or to eat during this time. Some of you are doing FaceTime with family and friends, and that's really um, helpful as well. Uh, some of you are finding a particular place where you find peace, and that's helping you during this time. Um, and I know for some of you, it's just gathering together and things like this, uh, whether over Zoom or FaceTime or something, just to see other faces that you haven't seen in a while. I'm really taken in this passage today that Jesus twice says, peace be with you. And I, I want to talk about how that might resonate with us, especially during a time of pandemic. Um, this comes during a resurrection appearance of Jesus to the disciples at the end of John's Gospel. So it's an appearance of Jesus come back to life after the crucifixion and appearing to his 
disciples. Now, I, I have to confess today that I long ago really lost much interest in debating with people about the historicity of the crucifixion, whether it actually happened in history or not. Now, there was a time when I would love to have that debate with people. I would have engaged in long, late-night debates with people over things like that, or how many angels can dance on the head of a pin, or how come the carnivores didn't eat all the other animals on Noah's Ark, right? Because that's, that's a good question to ask. But there's a point where I realized that that kind of discussion debate wasn't really getting me anywhere, particularly around the resurrection. I began to realize that it wasn't as important what I believed about what did or didn't happen on that first Easter as it was about it, what it meant to me. What, what meaning was I drawing out of that sense of Jesus coming back to life? And, and certainly that was true for the early church, for the earliest followers of Jesus, then the days after the first Easter morning and the weeks and the years that followed, it was not as important to them what had happened to Jesus in the resurrection as it was important to them how what happened to Jesus affected them and their community and their call to ministry moving on. And we see that today in this story from John's gospel. So here you've got the disciples. They're not too unlike us today. They're, they're holed up, quarantined, sheltering in place in some home, some room. They're fearful to go outside and the risen Jesus appears to them. The resurrected Jesus appears to them. And what does he say to them when he first walks in? The first thing he says, he doesn't say, see, I told you so, or he doesn't say, I said I'd be back or look what I did. What he says to them is peace be with you. Peace be with you. And so here's the resurrected Jesus sort of suggesting to the disciples, if they're paying attention, that whatever has happened in the resurrection is as much about them as it is about him. He's saying to them, resurrection isn't just about something that has happened, but it's about something that you're invited to participate in moving ahead. So for them, Easter and the resurrection isn't the end of the story. It's just the beginning of the story. And so I think that same challenge is out there for us today, too, is to what degree do we move past just believing or not believing in the resurrection? And at what point do we start participating in the resurrection, moving ahead? At what point do we become the people who participate in joy and hope and love and new life and peace being with each other, trusting in that way of life and believing that no matter what the forces of evil in the world try to do, no matter the forces of violence or indifference um, try to do in the world, that life continues, that love continues, that peace continues. And that's what we're invited as followers of Jesus to participate in. That is participating in the resurrection. And we do that sometimes in very small ways. And we leave little signs of the resurrection around wherever we go if we do that. Some of you are familiar with a member of our congregation here in St. Joseph, um, Elaine McCool, who's in her mid-90s now, and Elaine lives in a nursing facility. And Elaine, Elaine has long been one of the matriarchs of our church. And I just talked to Elaine this week, just to, by phone to catch up with her. She's sheltering in place, quarantined at her nursing facility, so she doesn't get to get out and see people. And she was telling me about how she used to engage in the spiritual practice of making little paper boxes, origami boxes. In fact, she gave one to me when I first came to town. And she would make these little boxes out of all these scraps of paper that she would save of wrapping paper or cards and things people would send to her. And they were about this big, these little origami boxes. And they were so intricate, they were a box, and then they had a lid on top. And she would place inside those little boxes a little encouraging note, or she would place in there a little a picture of something beautiful, and she would just give these out to people as a way to say, this is for you, peace be with you. And I believe that those, those little boxes were a symbol of the resurrection. They were just a little sign of God's hope and life and love and God's peace to all the people that she gave them to. Some of you have those boxes. I know that she gave them to you and you held on to them. And I think of the hundreds of people that she must have given those boxes to over all of her days. She doesn't have the eyesight anymore to make them, but I think that the signs of the resurrection, the peace that she sent out into the world when she did those, is still alive out there. And so that's the project I want to invite you into this morning. Our little creative project is uh, inspired by Elaine. And it will be our attempt for each of us to put a little sign of the resurrection out into the world, a little sign of participating in the resurrection, a little sign of peace be with you to those who might stumble upon this creative project we're going to do together. And so as I said earlier, all you need is some just some regular paper 
And it would be helpful if you had something to write or draw with. I have markers and crayons here. And I'm going to give you a little hint about what this is going to look like when we get done. And so I hope this project both appeals to those of you that are very uh, artsy and those of you very um, more technically minded, engineering minded, because we're going to engage in a little origami today as well. But before we get to the paper folding, I want you to just take your piece of paper. And if you have something to write or draw with, I want you to simply put a border around the edge of your piece of paper. Now, I want you to think about this. Somebody is going to find this. This isn't something for you to keep. Somebody's going to stumble upon whatever you do today. And we hope that it's a, a sign, just a glimmer of life and hope and peace and love for them. So make this as beautiful and bright and colorful as you possibly can. So just start with some kind of a, a, a border around your paper. And look, this may be um, practice for you. You may get this one done and say, ah, I didn't really like how that turned out, but it'll be a little bit of practice for the next one that you do. So just some kind of border with a color. You see how simple I've done that there. And then maybe you want to add a second color to your border. I feel like I'm Bob Ross here doing this. Does this feel like <laughs> Bob Ross? What's that? Yeah, let's, in fact, let's do that. Let's, uh, let's get something else out here. And maybe we want to add a little happy tree down in the corner here. Uh, we're going to leave a little room to, to draw or write something, but maybe a little happy tree. Just think about something colorful that bright that would brighten somebody. See, you don't have to be a great artist. That's a tree, right? Jonathan, that looked like a tree. Yeah, he's giving me the thumbs up. A tree, maybe, you know, what else does Bob Ross do? He's those little happy clouds. So let's put a little happy clouds up here at the top. All right. And you can color this in later more if you want to. But there, see, there's my little happy clouds. And you can be as elaborate with this or simple as you want. Okay. So there's just some thoughts. You can add anything. You put some flowers in there, butterflies or a cross, um, some kind of symbols that would represent something that's uh, uplifting to you. Okay, here's the next thing I want you to try, and this may not work for everybody, but down the left side of your page, I want you to, because our word today is peace, I want you to write in large letters the word peace. And hopefully we're not backwards, but we might be backwards today. I don't know if we're backwards or not, but you can see the word peace. Okay, it's good. All right, so the word peace written down the side of the page. And what I'm going to suggest for some of you that are more, you know, art writing minded, that what you could do here on, on your piece of art is creating a, what they call an acrostic poem. And so you would write something that a poem or just a, a, some phrases about peace by using the first letter of each of these. It's the beginning of a phrase or a sentence. You see, so the first sentence would begin with a P and then an E and then an A and a C and E. It could just be a word you put here that might be uplifting to somebody like possibility. All right. Or this could be a phrase. Everybody is in it together. That might be something people need to hear right now. Okay. Um, you know, just do that all the way down. And, or you might want to write some other notes, some other encouraging statement. Maybe a scripture comes to mind today that you want to include on here. Um, you may also want to do something on the back of this. All right. So you can see the ones that I have already worked on. I, I was, I wrote and drew on both sides and that's how it ends up looking like this because we're making hearts by the time we're done today, because our theme also is the heart of the matter. You can see this one. I just wrote a message on. That's all I did on this one with marker. And that's what will be found when we put this piece of art into the world. So here's what I invite you to do. We're going to take a couple minutes, let you work on this at home. Or if you're not doing it right now, you can be thinking about what you would be doing. Beth's going to play some music to spur our creativity. And while you're doing that, I'm going to fold this into an origami heart. I'm going to show you how easy this is that I can hopefully do this while you're working at home. Now, we're uh, not set up like Martha Stewart here. I don't have a camera overhead where you can watch me doing this. <laughs> Jonathan says he could try that, but we're, we're not going to do that today. But, but I'll show you when I get done. And then we're dropping some links into the, the chat feed where you can see uh, YouTube videos on how to very quickly make these hearts. Some are a little more difficult than others. You can actually find lots of videos on how to do this or just a, a web page where you can watch pictures of the steps on how to do this. It's not hard at all. Um, but I'll work on folding this into a heart while you work on whatever you're going to write or draw your little happy clouds or whatever you're putting on your piece of paper. And, and Beth, you want to give us some music while we work together.
Okay. There is my finished heart. And you see how easy that was? If I can do this, anybody can do this. And I, um, I've been practicing a little bit over the last couple of days, uh, making these hearts where I got that I didn't have to watch the video anymore. I could just sit down and fold like I just did this paper heart. And there are lots of variations. You can see we have other examples up here of hearts that we have made. And so uh, they don't all have to look the same. We use different kind of paper. Maybe you want to use construction paper or writing paper. Um, and I, I'll tell you this, I found that after I kind of learned to make the heart without having to look at the instructions, as I would take and create the piece of art or writing, and then I would fold it into the heart, it became a prayer practice. It became sort of meditative. If you're looking for some peace, this might be the way to do it. This might be your activity to just engage in, in folding this paper as sort of a meditative act while you think about who will find this. Because here's, here's what we want you to do with these. These are to become pieces of found art. So you're not to keep this. Um, you're supposed to send these out into the world. And so here's some suggestions. I think there are lots of ways we could share these hearts. And I want you to think about this. You've got your hearts. I've got mine. Other people are making theirs. But they're all part of one creative effort. It's like we're creating one piece of art, but in all kinds of homes and places all over the city and all over the community and all over the country. And so think about where you could share these hearts. And maybe you don't want to just make one. I mean, like I've made quite a few. You might want to really get into this as a prayer practice this week and make multiple hearts with multiple messages. You can see even after I got mine done, I added words to the outside and just colored. You don't have to be a great artist to do this. You could um, send these to somebody in the mail, obviously, that needs to hear a, a, a message of peace be with you, who needs to see a sign of the resurrection. You could leave these as found art somewhere. Now, one idea we had here locally was, you know, we have some bushes that sit along the side of the giant steps that lead up to the front of our sanctuary and we, uh, outside. And we thought, wouldn't it be great if we all came down here and hung these onto um, the bushes, you know, that people who are coming by, maybe you get a paper clip and you attach it to this and make it to, so it could hang or you put a string on it. And we thought, wouldn't it be interesting for somebody to walk by and see all of these hearts hanging off of this natural bush outside and maybe people would stop and take one and see what it was and it would be a, a, a gift for them, a message of hope. Maybe you take a walk every day and you think there's a tree I go by that's right off the sidewalk that other people walk by too. And when nobody's looking, you hang your heart on the tree and you let other people find it. Maybe you set it on the this, this front stoop of the neighbor's house, ring the doorbell, let them see that you left them something and go. I'd also encourage you as another way to share the beauty of this art project, this creative project, is to take pictures of what you've created and put it onto uh, Facebook or other social media. Maybe tag the church in it and let us know that you're out there sharing these gifts of love. And then even people who aren't physically receiving them are seeing signs of God's love and hope out there. And so I encourage you to be creative in the ways that you share this project um, with each other and with God's world. And know that in doing it, you are in this creative act practicing resurrection. You're not just thinking about something that happened a long time ago, but you're practicing being part of just a little sign of God's hope and love and light and God's peace be with you in the world. Let's pray together. Gracious and loving God, you stir our creative spirits today. You invite us to open our hearts and be those who move out into the world, out of the locked doors of our hearts and our minds during times of fear and anxiety. We step out into the world in hope. Let us go following the risen Christ. Let us go trusting that the way he shows us is the way that leads to your love. Let us go willing to be little signs of the resurrection. Let us go embodying your peace in ourselves and with all those that we meet. And all God's people say together, Amen.